yesterday we were doing this bode plot and uh, i'll just quickly summarize that every time you see a pole in the magnitude plot the slope decreases by db per decade and in the phase plot phase decreases by 90 degrees okay every time you have a zero your slope increases by quantity db per decade and the phase right half plane zero left half plane zero depending on where it is if it's a right half plane zero then the phase decreases by 90 degrees if it's a left half plane zero the phase increases by 90 degrees. and then um, if it's a complex conjugate pair of poles this is something we did not do in the class i did not prove it but if it is a complex conjugate pair of poles then the slope decreases by 40 db per decade and uh, uh, the phase decreases by 180 degrees I I seem to have uh, uh, forgotten this, but you might be correct. It doesn't matter. We won't encounter these situations in our course. Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, the other thing is that if you want to compute the value of the gain at the pole frequency so remember this this plot that i have drawn is an approximate plot okay you have made approximations here. okay also remember that if you draw a mathematical function if you plot a mathematical function you won't get such straight lines all right we we'll get some curves so really this plot is an asymptotic plot asymptotically the curve will look like this however if you draw it using a computer or a calculator what you'll find is that these edges are rounded off okay very straightforward now this rounding of the edges happens at the pole locations notice or at the zero locations so if you do the computation if you just look at the equation etc you will find that at the pole location the gain is going to be 3 db less than what you have predicted from the plot so this difference this amount of rounding is 3 db in the phase plot also there is going to be some rounding okay the, so it won't go from plus uh, uh, from 0 degrees to minus 90 degrees suddenly there will be a rounding over there so there also if you do the computation you will find that at the pole location the amount of phase that you get is minus 45 okay 
so i am just going to write rounding okay so at the pole location it's going to be rounded by 3 degrees degree at the zero location it's going to be 3 degree above depending on which way you are going right and uh, the phase will be rounded below or above by 45 degrees according to which way you are going hmm? you do the computation yes yeah, it's very easy square root of 2 is so you get 1 by 1 plus 1 something like this <coughs> look here right that will give you minus 3d it will be something like this of this nature so do the computation go back to the equations that we wrote plug in omega equal to p1 and you'll see 1 by square root of 1 plus sorry 1 plus j yeah that's the same thing Okay, this is very simple calculation, but I don't want to waste time. There is not a class on Bode plots. We want to do analog circuits. Okay, so with this background, given any number of poles and a DC gain, you should be able to plot. the magnitude plot and the gain plot now the big question is why bother why would you want to do such a thing go back to your control theory there were a lot of different techniques that you probably studied root hurwitz criterion you remember this was the easiest of the lot i think root hurwitz <coughs> then there was uh, another gentleman named nyquist you could do something called a nyquist plot and the third was a bode plot what do all of these things do stability of the system looking one important word hmm no i am missing one very very important word here think about it if you have feedback thank you that's the important word i was missing feedback so what am i trying to think that what's the deal here after feedback will my system be stable or not by itself the system is stable okay if you notice your cascode amplifier all your poles are already in the left half plane if all the poles are in the left half plane it doesn't matter where the zeros are the system is stable it does not matter if there are six poles or 20 poles or two poles or one pole if all the poles are in the left half plane the system is 
theta. Okay? The complication is that you don't want to use the amplifier by itself. You want to use the amplifier in future in the presence of other things which form a feedback loop around the amplifier. Okay, so that is the only complication here. So you are building an op amp. If you would like to use the op amp just like this, then we don't need to study all this. Okay, whatever we have done is sufficient. Okay, you don't probably don't even have to bother about voltage loss. Nothing is needed. If this is your plan. If this is how you want to use your amplifier, then nothing else is needed. However, we don't want to use the amplifier like this. Okay? We want to use the amplifier in the presence of feedback. These resistors form feed they feed the output back to the input in some fashion. Alright? So when you put your amplifiers in feedback, then the entire circuit changes. You can do one thing. You can go back, start with your Kirchhoff's law, replace the amplifier with your uh, uh, MOSFETs, and then uh, find out where the poles and zeros are. That is one possibility. The other possibility, of course, that is a very, very difficult one because you have to analyze a lot of Kirchhoff's laws and a lot of equations you have to write. It's going to be a mess. Okay? The other possibility is that we already know what this is. Okay? Can we develop some theory so that we can quickly find out where are the poles and zeros? going to be after we apply the field. Yes, are they in the right half plane or in the left half plane? If they are in the right half plane, then you have to work harder. They are unstable and you have to go back to the design board. Okay? If they are in the left half plane, then you are happy and you submit your design to your boss. Right? So this is the basic idea, okay? And this is the reason why we are going to look at the voltage. If you don't plan to use the amplifier in feedback, might be, might have such plans. I don't know. If you do have such plans, then you don't need to work with the voltage lot and work and find out gain margin and phase margin as it does not have to So it does not matter. All these are non issues But if you do want to use the amplifier like this, in this fashion, or in any other fashion that uses feedback, okay, it could look like this. I don't know. For all you know, it could look like this. Okay? So directly the output is not connected to the input, to the resistor. But the feedback path is far more complicated. It goes all the way around. Okay? In any fashion, if you want to use the op amp in any such fashion where the output is linked up to the input, then you have to study the voltage plot and find out the gain and phase margins. Okay? Or you could do the root Hurwitz criterion or you could do the Nyquist criterion. Any of these techniques apply equally well. It's just that voltage plot is convenient. Alright? 
So what's the gain margin and phase margin business? You're right. I heard you. Yeah. Plotted the uh, magnitude h of j omega in decibels, y axis, phase of h of j omega, and uh, x axis is omega in the log scale. Okay, and suppose p1 and p2 are two poles, then um, after p1, I am supposed to get a slope of minus 20 dB per decade, and after p2, I am supposed to get a slope of minus 40 dB per decade. Right, and after P1, suppose I started from zero degrees, then after P1, I'm supposed to get a phase of something like minus 90 degrees, and after P2, I'm supposed to get a phase of something close to 180, minus 180. Now, what can you say about these uh, phases? Now this this plot in general, what can you say about? It? These straight lines are not really straight lines, these are all asymptotic in nature. Okay, so let's draw the real curve. The real curve is going to look like this. start from a gain of A, okay, and say 0 dB is uh, somewhere, it does not matter, okay. Now, you are Vivek, right? Yeah. So, what Vivek said is that uh, phase margin, do you say phase margin or gain margin? Phase margin is the amount of phase that is more than minus 180 degrees when the gain is 0 dB. 0 dB is a gain of 1. Okay? So, I need to find out at what frequency is the gain equal to 1. Suppose uh, the x axis that I have here is 0 dB. Then the frequency at which gain is 1 is this thing, this point. Okay? So at that frequency, 
what is the phase how much is the phase more than minus 180 degrees that is the definition of phase margin so i look at the phase plot at this particular frequency and i see that it's a tiny amount above minus 180 degrees that tiny amount is the phase margin now tell me if there are two poles just by looking at this plot if there are two poles and only two poles in the system will you ever get a phase margin that is less than zero so if there are two poles only two poles then you will never get a phase margin that is less than 0 degrees okay a positive phase margin indicates that when i put my system in unity gain feedback it is going to be stable okay unity gain feedback is the worst form of feedback why is this the worst form of feedback because you are going to feed back all of the output to the input okay that's the maximum possible you can't feed more than that negative feed yeah uh, naturally i mean if there is no negative feedback then <coughs> yeah so don't worry about it. of course the assumption is that there is negative feed negative unity gain feed so if the phase margin is greater than 0 and that means that when you use the system eventually in the presence of unity gain feedback it is going to be stable if you use the system in the presence of feedback with less than unity gain then of course the system is going to be stable if you somehow manage to have more than unity gain feedback then we can't say anything from the board effect. so just look at the word what the sentence the says sentence is if phase margin is greater than 0 this is the rule this is what you learned from your control theory i am not going to prove this okay so there is no detailed discussion of this if phase margin is greater than 0 then the system will be stable in the presence of unity gain feedback negative feedback this is my statement okay so in future when i use the system in the presence of unity gain feedback then it is going to be stable this is the claim this is all open loop okay there is no we are not we don't even know what loop there is this is all open loop so okay all right this is my statement and the similar statement is so what does uh, be stable mean system will be stable means that all the poles will be in the left half plus okay that that's that's the only thing that i'm claiming i don't know how many poles there are going to be i don't care i don't care about the zeros i don't care about anything i just want to know if the system is going to be stable or not and this is the theory that this gentleman named bode came up with yes you have to look at the whole loop from the input to the output from the entire the loop you have to take not just for the op this is okay so far so good a 
similar statement is that if the gain margin is more than zero, I haven't yet defined gain margin, then the system will be safe. Okay, that's a similar statement. Now, does everyone understand what is phase margin? Phase margin is the amount of phase that I have if I look at the frequency where the gain is 0 dB. So I look at the frequency at which the gain is 0 dB. I go back to the phase plot and see how much more phase I have than what minus 1 dB is. Okay? So there is a tiny amount of phase over here. This is my phase margin, that tiny amount of phase over there. All right? The similar statement is gain margin. The statement is, if you go to the frequency at which the phase is minus 180 degrees, does the phase ever become minus 180 degrees in this case? <coughs> it becomes at infinity because it's asymptotic. So it never really hits minus 180. You can't really do the gain margin for this case. In a system with only two poles, you can't really compute the gain margin. But suppose it hits minus 180 degrees. Suppose there is some more pole afterwards and it hits minus 180 degrees. No, suppose there is another pole over here and this finally hits minus 180 degrees. So you look at the frequency at which the phase hits minus 180 degrees. You go back to the gain plot and see how much less gain you have from 0 degree. That is the gain market. If the gain is less than 0 dB, then the gain margin is positive. If the gain is more than 0 dB, then the gain margin is negative. So the statement is how much more gain can I have? Okay. Look at the frequency at which the phase is minus 1. That phase, how much more gain can I possibly have to make my total gain less than zero? To keep my total gain equal to zero? How much gain can I have? Am I allowed? How much more gain am I allowed? That's the gain margin. Alright? So is this clear? So you look at the phase at which, uh, you look at the frequency at which phase is minus 180 degrees, go back to the gain plot, see what the gain is. If the gain is less than 0 degree, your gain margin is positive. If the gain is more than 0 degree, your gain margin is negative. Alright? What happens when there are two poles and one zero? For the uh, left half plane zero. So how is this plot going to look like? So suppose, I, I don't know, suppose all the poles come first and then the zero comes. Doesn't matter, without any loss of generality.
gain is going to become zero degree. You are going to go to the phase plot. How is the phase plot going to look like? You start from zero degrees. After P one, you have minus one uh, minus ninety. After P two, you have minus one eighty. It never really hits minus one eighty. Asymptotically, is going to be minus one eighty. And then at after the zero frequency, it's going to be back to minus ninety degrees. It's going to look something like this. So, what is the phase matrix? Now you need to do the math. You look at the frequency of this. You go to the phase plot. How much is it above minus 180 degrees? It is 90 degrees above minus 180 degrees. Okay. So if you have a system which has two poles and one left half plane zero, then you will have 90 degrees of phase matrix. Okay. The rule is this: that the more the phase margin, the better, the more stable the system is going to be. So, why do we want more phase margin? Why not just 0.1 degrees of phase margin? Is it enough to have 0.1 degrees of phase margin? Suppose you design your system, you see that you have got 0.1 degrees of phase margin. You submit your design to your boss. Will your boss be happy? <coughs> It's like this. You are constructing a building. Okay, the building is going to barely stand on its own. You put a man up there, building is going to collapse. Is it any good? No good, right? So it's something like that. You want to keep some margin. You want to keep headroom for things to be put there. You want to keep pots of flowers, you know, flower pots in your house. You want to keep furniture in your house. You want to walk around in your house. You have to consider the weight of all these things. Okay, all these extra things. So if you are constructing a building, if you are a civil engineer, you can't just barely make sure that. The building stands on its own. Can't be on the brink. All right. What what extra things can happen here? Mismatch. I don't know about noise, but uh, mismatch definitely. You might have thought that the pole was there. Remember, there is no absolute uh, value. On a chip, things can be 20% here and there. If you are talking about the value of a capacitor, it can be 20% off. If you are talking about the value of GM, it can be another 20% off. Okay, so GM over C can be 40% off. Right? So you can't make it on the brink. You need some margin. So what else can happen? Non-linear. You have made a lot of approximations. Okay, you have thrown out some poles. In my dashboard analysis, I threw out some poles. Are they true? So there could be some extra poles in your system that you have forgotten about. Okay. So suppose I make this system with two poles and say that my system has only two poles, and therefore it can never go wrong. Got 0.1 degrees of phase margin. Here it is, right? You might have forgotten about something. There could be some parasitic extra pole somewhere, and that's going to push that 0.1 degrees out. So okay, suddenly you find that things don't work. Temperature could change on the chip. As temperature changes, the values of GM, etc., etc., always change, right? 
so all of these things contribute to are basically equivalent to putting furniture in your house etc et all of these extra stuff extra effects <coughs> that you have ignored so to account for all that you need to have a substantial amount of save money when you are designing an amplifier you should be having a substantial amount of save money good number to make your boss very happy is um, 60 rupees okay that's generally a very good number to make your boss pleased if you are giving your boss a system which has 90 degrees of phase margin then your boss will say that oh this is not aggressive enough you have over designed okay reduce the weight of the concrete etc etc supporting the you put too many beams in your construction okay go and make it cheaper go and make the design better make it more optimal consume less power Okay, these are all the things that your boss is going to tell you, and he is going to send you back to the design board. So, 90 degrees is over design. 60 degrees is what keeps the bosses happy. 45 degrees is very aggressive, but your boss might not get upset. So there is a possibility that he won't be upset with 45 degrees. Less than 45, he will be upset. All right. So I'm just giving you thumb rules, so that you know, when you design your amplifier, just make sure that you stick to these guys. So I can't give you any real explanation why 45 degrees, why not 30 degrees. Okay. It's just that <coughs> there are these unquantified effects that you have to take care of. Temperature changes. This matters. We thought a value is so much; it isn't. Okay, so all of these unquantified parameters are going to play uh, their roles. As a result, over the years, engineers have been designing amplifiers, designing amplifiers. They have figured out that 45 degrees is aggressive, 60 degrees is a good design, 90 degrees is too good. Okay. 90 degrees is so good that it can be made worse. Okay, so this is this is the generic uh, idea. So we typically like phase margin of 60 degrees. If I give you an exam problem, might be like, give me a phase phase margin of 60 degrees. All right, or 45 degrees, some number like that. question is suppose uh, how will be doing on time we are doing badly on time <coughs> okay i actually wanted to move to the next chapter but there is one more thing i want to discuss before we go to the next chapter so the question is this i'll just pose the question and leave it there Suppose I have these two poles. Okay, let's think of a system which has only two poles. Now, I'm going to draw the Bode plot. Ok, 
plotted looks something like this. The phase plot looks something like this, and the gain plot looks something like what I've drawn. Remember, all of these are in the log scales. Now, suppose <coughs> you know the location of P1. Okay? And you know the DC gain of your system. Suppose you know the DC gain of the system, you know the location of P1. So the question that I'm posing to you is what should P2 be? What should the value of P2 be such that the phase margin you get is 60 degrees? Or let's make it a little more general. Some arbitrary angle, positive angle, five. Suppose you want a phase margin five. What should the value of P2 be? Given values are ABC and P1. Any other value that you want? Actually, no, there is nothing else. <coughs> Those are enough to quantify the body plot. A, the value of ABC, the value of P1, and the value of P2 are enough to quantify the body plot, right? My question is what should the value of P2 be such that my phase margin is what I want it to be? Okay, so you can try this as homework. Try it out at home, but it's a small calculation.